the exterior styling is really slick. In fact, it looks even better in person. Um, I don't know, I find it looks almost European. It's got little curves everywhere and it's really awesome. I don't understand why they didn't make a five door hatchback coupe out of this. It would have worked and it would have been even more practical. The wheels are nice, 215s, 17 inches, and has nice LED lights all around. Now this is the high level touring model and it comes in at $27,000 plus tax Canadian. So that's pretty expensive. It's competing against the best in the class. As you can imagine, this high level touring model comes with all the options and of note, the adaptive cruise control is smooth in operation most of the time. Uh, the rear trunk is huge and it splits 60-40, which is very convenient. The inside door is of reasonable quality, made with cheapy soft stuff and lots of faux stitching. Inside, you have a lot of space for a car with such a low silhouette. It's actually uh, quite amazing. Um, it is four people sit easy, five in a pinch, while the six footers will have their heads scraping the roof liner. Uh, another interesting note, there are heated seats for this car, which is kind of awesome. In the front, same story, a nice horizontal trim there and cubby spaces. Uh, same material texture as the back. However, inside, uh, the seats are, despite having a very nice leather, are worst in class, uncharacteristic of Honda. And, however, I have to say that there's no noise, vibration or harshness and the interior craftsmanship has been upgraded by a lot compared to the previous model. No two layer dash, now it's one layer and it looks like a very happy dash and it's very easy to consult and you even have the nav that appears inside the dash. Uh, you also have the center console, the infotainment is horrible to use, however it looks really good. Chassis is set up super competent, uh, very sporty yet very comfortable, it's actually kind of amazing. The engine is uh, really smooth, this is the turbo engine, 1.5 liter turbo, it makes 174 horsepower and 162 foot-pounds of torque and it does 7.6 in the city, 5.5 on the highway. Now that's engineering, that is freaking awesome. And the clincher is it does that on regular gas, that's amazing. Uh, road noise is really subdued on the highway for a uh, Honda Civic. Here are my thoughts on the road. Um, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about the history of this car, but first got to go back in 2012. Inside the 2012 Honda Civic. Um, a few remarks. The exterior styling is bland. Uh, the car doesn't drive particularly well, though it is okay. It does the regular routine very well. It's got that Honda easiness. But the disaster is really on the inside. Now on the inside, this car um, seems to have had its parts supplied by the lowest bidder at every step. The plastics are hard and rough here. The just overall feeling of cheapness is evident. The two-tier dash is some like it, some think it's a little bit gimmicky. I, I find it feels cheap, it feels cheap, but that's a personal opinion, I should say. In this car's defense, the controls are well laid out. There's a swooping form of the dash, which makes it feel driver-centered. The manual transmission is best in class. I'm driving it now and it's wonderful. And the seats are incredible, much better than the 2016 base seats. I'm in a base Civic now with air conditioning. So that's where Honda's starting. Another thing is on the highway, this car buzzes like an animal. It's unbearable actually. And with the manual transmission, you're doing about 3000 RPM at 100 kilometers an hour or 60 miles an hour. Let's go back into 2016. So you see what the problem was in 2012. I want to talk to you guys a little bit about Honda, the history of this car before we get into the review. Um, <clears throat> Honda Civics 10, 20 years ago were aspirational cars. This is no longer the case. Honda is no longer an inspirational brand. Two models, I think, really destroyed the aura that Honda Acura had. For Acura, it was the 2009 uh, Acura TL, which was a styling nightmare. Uh, cut the sales of that car in half in the US. For Honda, the killer model was the 2012 Honda Civic that we just saw now. There was a lot of things to improve. Um, 
So the question is for me during this review is, did they correct all the problems? That's number one. And number two, are they now competitive? Because before they were the econo box. And I just want you guys to think about one thing. If you would have told me 10 years ago that the Corolla would be a better looking car than the Honda Civic, I would have looked at you and laughed. But the, when the Corolla came out in 2014, I have to say that the Corolla S was much better looking than the Honda Civic EX. It's undeniable. So this is the times we are living in. Moving along now to this car. Now this is the all equipped model. So we have to compare apples with apples. We have to compare it to the, the regular Golf, all equipped. We have to compare it to the Kia Forte, all equipped. We have to compare it to uh, the titanium of Ford of the Ford Focus. Um, you know, we gotta compare it to the same level car. The Mazda, the Mazda 3 GT, we have to compare. Is this car better than those cars? Well, the short answer to that question is no, it isn't like clearly better than those cars. There are some things that this car does better and there are some things that those cars do better. Is it overall better than those cars? I'm not, I'm not ready to say that right now. I, I, I can't say that. Did this, does this car correct the flaws of that 2012 model that we just saw? The answer is mostly yes. We'll start with the exterior styling. I think it's wonderful. The camera doesn't do it justice. I mean, in person, it just looks great. They put it down to the right height, it seems. It bulges out in the right places without looking too immature, let's say. It's a wonderful looking vehicle. That's all there is to it. How about the inside? Visibility is wonderful. Uh, the touch points are great. I love this shifter. When you put it into gear, it has a nice solid in-feel, like you're in gear. Uh, the steering wheel is simply the best. I love this steering wheel. The interior quality of the materials is good. They've dropped the two-story dash. It's now on one story, and it, it's a very happy dashboard. I'm very happy using it. The dash layout is much better than it was before. It has a much more sophisticated look. They've improved the sound system in terms of the quantity of sound. However, the quality of sound is still low. The touch, uh, the just overall feel, it feels very Honda. Uh, the gas pedal is light to the touch. Brakes, brakes pretty hard though. It's progressive. It doesn't bite down too hard. It's Honda comfortable still. Steering feel is, you drive it with your fingertips. Just want to make a comment that uh, actually Ross, I was talking about it, but Ross resumed it well. The suspension tuning on this car is, I would have to say, an absolute perfection. It seems to be as comfortable as it possibly can be, yet when I am either changing lanes fast or taking curves, it stays relatively flat and it is very capable. There's actually a lot of money that must have gone into that because it's really a, a high performance in terms of its conflicting abilities of being comfy and sharp handling. I want to talk a little bit about the seating. Rear seating is fine. Pretty spacious actually for such a low slung, coupish looking sedan. And the front seats are, I have to say, which this is very uncharacteristic of Honda, very uncomfortable. The leather quality is, is sufficient, but it's just the backrest. Ross noted this, noted this also. Not very comfortable. After half an hour, your back starts to hurt. So that is, that's a lot. If you're doing long hauls, think about that. At the car show, when I was sitting down in the base model seats, the material of the seats was horrible, horrible. This engine is so smooth. They're getting really good at this. I've always felt that the four cylinder turbo was like the right engine for 20, 2016, 2015, because you kind of get the fuel economy of a four cylinder when you're not on it, and you get reasonable amounts of torque when you're on it. And this engine transmission, it's a CVT by the way, and it feels like a CVT. Um, it, it, it really gets great fuel economy. And when you, when you kick it, it goes reasonably fast. I want to show you now how this car accelerates. So now we're doing about eight kilometers an hour. Floor it now. 
CVTs on. And that's how fast they got to 12. So it gives you an idea of the passing power. It's much more sprightly than a regular four-cylinder engine. And it is so smooth and quiet. Um, that's another thing about this car, I have to say. On the road, you don't have the typical Honda noise. It's relatively well insulated from wind and road noise. You can do 100 kilometers an hour and hold a conversation and there's no problem. And I just want to talk a little bit about this ridiculous infotainment system. It's just so hard to use. It's complicated. And I'm very glad that we have lane departure warning and forward collision because you need those things to operate the infotainment system, right? Because else you're just going to get into an accident. I thought it was only used for texting on cell phones, but no, to operate the Honda infotainment system, you need, you need lane departure warning and forward collision. In conclusion, I can say that this car meets the minimum standard of the compact class. It's very good. It competes very well with the best. Is it better than everyone? I really, I'm not prepared to say that. So, well, that's the review.